So there's a shape, a rug, a, a something on the floor that's both in front of the fireplace and in front of the, you see how we figured out a space now, kind of created a space on the floor. By moving back to the known entity, which is the door and the, and the fireplace, right? So all of a sudden, I've generated a sense of space on the floor. It's kind of miraculous when you think about it. So using these vanishing points is very important to position things in your scheme. Here. Now let's make that into a table. How would I make that into a, like a little coffee table? Bringing up the z-axis. Vertical, yeah, you do the vertical axis here on each corner. Vertical, 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 vertical. So now we're making it into a cube, right? This is why the cube's, there's the bottom of the cube. Um, I want the table to be half the height of the fireplace. So you measure the size of the fireplace, divide by two. That's one way to do it. That, that would make sense, but you can get in trouble with that. I'll show you in one okay. second. I, 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 oh, I know you're... Go ahead, Ted. Yeah, yeah. I would start with the left side of the, of the top. And what I would do... Of what? Top of what? I, what my aim would be to draw the top of the left top Left of the, of the edge table. of the table, okay. right. right. And the way that I would do it would be from the bottom of the left edge of the fireplace to the top. I well, would find the half. I would find the halfway point. Right here along there. Right yep. there. Yep. And then I would draw a line. Connecting the left vanishing That's point correct. through that point and onto the front corner of the table. Yes, that's what we're doing. So look how high it gets, right? It's much higher than I anticipated. Something like that. That's the way you do it. Just kind of projecting from infinity, in, dividing this in half, and bringing that out into space. So now I've created a height of this thing relative to the fireplace. Um, so back to your suggestion, Adam. Here's what happens if you just do this. Okay. There's the height, closest height of the table to me now, right? I'm gonna take. I'm just gonna measure that and take it back to the fireplace. It's like almost three quarters the height of the fireplace. So how can the height of this be three quarters the height of the fireplace if I move it over here, but yet I use the the, uh, the half the height of the fireplace to project out and create the height of the table, it's which closer. is correct. What's that? It's closer to you. Yeah, it's closer. That's right. That's the beauty of the vanishing point. So if I were just to measure it and apply this out here, all of a sudden the table becomes too small, so I lose my sense of scale. So what you have to do is you go from a known entity, use your vanishing point, project that size out into this floor somewhere. You know, if I'm putting a, um, another object out here, say out here somewhere, just so happens that's kind of lining up with that, that's the back end, right? But look how big things get out here, you know, that goes off, off all the way off, you know, so out here somewhere that table becomes even bigger. I've had people draw chairs in, the, in their drawings and not pay attention to this using these project, projected from the vanishing point. So they're drawing the chairs, and literally the chairs look like they're like little uh, doll chairs, right? Because they, they think they're in scale with the drawing, you know, but they're not. So you always have to go back, again, from the known entity, which in this case is the height, half the height of the fireplace, project outward to get a, a correct relationship going. Okay? And this happens in real life. Okay? That's why things are... If I were to... We, back to what we talked about at the beginning of the semester, you know... I'm measuring, you know, something in this side, like the light over there by Zach fits in this light one, two, three, four, five times, even though they're the same same size objects in real reality, right? You know, this is what this is revealing. Okay, the same size object closer to you becomes bigger. So this is a nice way of do, of, of of accommodating. That. Okay, so let's finish the table off. So all we have to do now is take that height of that thing, wrap it around to the vanishing point, right? to there. 
This goes back up to here, and we've created a cube, right? Now it so happens that that's just kind of overlapping the corner of the fireplace, so what? I'm going to erase it away. I'm going to say it's, we can't see through the top of the table, so that's going away. And I'm even going to erase away the what was the rug. All well, the rug was was just give, give me a location and a size and scale and all that sort of stuff. You can put a rug in there if you want to, but if I were to put a rug in here, I'd probably make it just a little bigger, right? Wrap it around. Wouldn't be exactly the same size as the table, so I'm going to get rid of all that stuff. So now I'm left with what happened to the third leg, or the other leg, the fourth leg? Yeah, it's hidden a little bit. Depending on what you're drawing, a, you might see a little bit of that, you might not. In this scenario, you know, it, going up to here and dropping it down, the end of that leg is like right in here somewhere, so I wouldn't see it. If somebody asked me that uh, the other day, and I was like, yeah, that's true. You know, where'd the other leg go? Well, it's just not there. Now, the novice, you know, would put it in there. Even though it doesn't line up with the corner, if it goes straight up, and it's too long, the desire to get that fourth leg in there would, would supersede the logic of not having it in there. Well, it's a big table. You might not see it all together. That's it. That's, it. Yeah, that's, what, that's what's happening here. Yeah. The, the, the structure of the drawing is revealing that to gotcha. us. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Yeah. What happens if it was a glass tabletop? Then you would you see, see it. it. Then you'd see it. It's right, be right there. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, you'd see it then, but it would, you know, but then when you're drawing it, you'd have to show somehow that that's class, right? Or if you want it to be class table, you know, maybe so you'd, it'd be diffused a little bit, a little fuzzier than the real one, you know, all those sorts of issues would start. You'd have to do with the glass insert, like like stain. Yes, yeah, so you'd go all the, you'd go like all out. Stained glass or stained glass or something. And that's how you do it. You know, it'd be hard to do with just a line drawing, right? It would look just like a whole, you know, you couldn't show the glass, but. Or if you, you could do that and like put a object on here, right? So that we can kind of see that there's something setting on it, but yet we can see through it, right? So that might be another way of doing that. Okay. Do you want three dimensions to the legs? Yes, let's do that. Yep, 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 I do. Mm -hmm. So right now they're just they're thin, kind of just single lines, right? And I do want three dimensions on your legs. You got to kind of navigate this. Everything has dimension in the world. So. Um, just make them a cube. So this, you only see two sides of this at one time. So down, down, then how do I fix that? Yep, just goes up here. That goes up there. And that's pretty simple. And we'll make a we'll make the table have a little dimension here in a second, I'll show you that. So let's go to the other one. So there's their initial line, right? So I go down. Would I come out here and do the double line? No, I'd have to do it in here somewhere. So there's where the leg ends. I project this downward, right? So there's one side of it. I'm going to go get another marker here in a second. We're almost done here. <laughs> I feel it. Okay. How do I, what, how about the other side? Yeah, it goes the other, it cuts in underneath, right? Yeah, it cuts in underneath. So it goes to this vanishing point. See how that, that illusion of that going in underneath the table. Other side, this is tough. You know, when you get to this, you'll have problems with this. It's very difficult. Down, this goes to here, right? Follows that. So I would advise you to, you know, do the outside surface first and then cut in underneath the table, up to there. And that's how you dimensionalize the legs. Okay. So they look like chunks of wood or something like that. And we can give a little dimension to the table itself. Go up to here. Oh, let's see. Stuff in between those two. That corner stays in the way. So I'm going to do one more move here, and I'm going to get a new marker to draw the chair, but I want to put a light hanging above this, directly above this table from the ceiling, okay? Do you want to? Oh, you know how, you know how to do it. How do I find, how do I find the space, the space right above that table, right in the middle? Go up the Z-axis and see where it hits. 
Well, we're going to do that in a second. Okay. But, but you got to find the middle first. So what Ted's saying, you put an X here, right? Remember we did that with the side of the house to find the, where the peak is, right? Same right. principle. And then you do that. You go straight up, right? So vertical is just vertical. So I know where, if I go, take a line straight up above that X, anywhere along that line will be directly above that table, okay? So I'm just going to put a kind of a globe light in. You know, I'm going to hang it at eye level. I'm going to hang it down low relative to the table. So I know now that that is hanging right above the center of the table. But I need to attach it to the ceiling. So tell me when I, I'm going to run the cord up and hit the ceiling. Tell me when I hit the ceiling. No. Okay, so I hit the ceiling when I interfere with that line. No. no. That makes sense if I'm on the wall. I'm not, remember I'm out here a little bit in the space. You don't really know where that is. Oh, you find the center line, you go straight up it and then just move it over, right? Oh, well, well, you're you getting there. Yeah, you're okay. Getting, yeah, you're getting there. No, so, like get the middle, yeah, go off the. I don't know. Go you off the corner of the wall and then go up. You can up. take a guess, but I don't know. But there's a way of finding out. So I'm just going to take it up there a little ways. Okay, I don't know yet where it is. So how would you find out where that thing hits the ceiling? Where's the corner, and then where's it going? From where? I use this vanishing. I do use this vanishing point. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for, through what though? That's out a ways. I can't use. I gotta. I gotta backtrack to this to where the ceiling and the wall come together. I gotta find a point. I gotta find a point on the ceiling and the wall. This line right here somewhere that I can project through to give me a location for that out there. Can you use like the side of the fireplace? There you go. Now you're okay. working your way back down. Okay, so remember I put the table right in front of the fireplace, right? So the, the center of the table is the center of the fireplace. I, I, I created the table based on position relative to both the door and the fireplace, right? So the center of the table is the center of this opening of the fireplace by default. Because that's, that's how I positioned the table. Everybody with me so far? No? Okay. So if I find the center of the fireplace, what do I, what can I do with that? Go up, go off the vanishing point from not, not yet. I, I do something else with it. I find the center of the fireplace. Let's do that. Plus, you know, the old opening is here somewhere, right? So What's that relative to? This one. Okay. The center is relative to going that way, so that becomes your center. There's the center of the fire opening a fireplace, right? Which is what I started with. Now what I do with that? I go up, up. Remember, I know that the opening of the fireplace is is even with the wall, right? Right. And that's why from the get-go I understood that because of the bottom line of the opening of the fireplace is the bottom line of the wall. So this is on the same plane as the wall, right? Mm -hmm. That gives me an advantage. Now I can just go up behind the mantle. It's like I'm striking a line all the way up the length of the wall. I'm on the wall now. How do I know I'm on the wall? Huh? And I started here. This opening, this space right here. Not, it's not inside the fireplace, it's right in the opening of the fireplace, which is equal to the wall, right? Yeah. Right here. Found a middle, put my pen there, and ran that spot all the way up the, the wall, behind the mantle, and then I get, when do I stop it? When I get to that line, right? right. Now I know I'm hitting the ceiling, because I'm on the wall. So I'm going up behind the mantle, and I stop there. I'm hitting the ceiling now. Out here, I didn't know when I hit the ceiling. So what do I do with that mark? The same point, and then you can then you can find out where the center of the table by the you can find out the center of the table is where that that's that I'm, line I'm, I'm creating a circuit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this comes out. That gives me the position. Yeah. Of that. So can you see the circuit I created down to the table, back to the fireplace, up the middle of the fireplace, up the wall. There's like a a plane right there. A plane that goes. And it keeps going based on the Spanish.
So there's a system of creating, finding space, finding space in these drawings. Everybody with me on that? Yeah, so I think you need to go to the other marker. I'm getting another marker in the other room, yeah. 